Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play Baldur's Gate 2, the Enhanced Edition, The Shadows of Arm. And way last we left off, we were tasked with wiping out a Spurf Neblin patrol and with killing Solar Fiend. But in both instances, we were told that we only needed to bring back an item as proof of us succeeding, which meant that with some careful dialogue choices, Most we were able to succeed in both of our missions while killing no one. We explained to the Spurf Neblin that we didn't want to kill them, but we had to bring proof that we killed some of them, so the leader gladly gave up their helmet. And with Solafine, we explained that Fair wanted him dead, but that we weren't going to do it, and he gladly gave up his cloak, and has now fled away. More importantly, he owes us a favour, and that is a favour that we're going to cash in sooner rather than later. More importantly, however, Fair thinks we succeeded in both missions, and believes that we are ruthless, powerful, and obedient. She is very impressed, and has told us to go to the temple to meet Mother Argilus, the matron mother of House Disparna. We have clearly impressed her, and that's good, because we need to earn their trust so that we can figure out where those eggs are. But before we go to the temple, I need to talk about what happens if you hand in the cloak to Fair and you're a male character, because Fair is so impressed with you that she propositions you there and then. Now there are a number of ways that you can go through that situation. You can just say, okay, and then you sleep with her. If you're in a romance, this could be a very bad thing. If you're in a romance with Vaconia, she barely bats an eyelid. If you're in a romance with Jahira, you have to be very careful with your conversation with her after the event, or the relationship will end. If you're in a romance with Airy, this is an unmitigated disaster and it will end the relationship. If you're in a relationship with Dawn, I don't know because I've never had Dawn in my party before. I imagine it wouldn't end well, and Dawn would want to kill her. There are ways that you can say no. She's not going to take no directly as an answer, but you can say that you can't sleep with her, whereupon she reads between the lines, gets very disappointed and quite disgusted with you. The other way that you can say no is by saying that you're already with someone, someone in the party, whereupon Fair says that that doesn't matter because she'll eventually get that person killed and then you will be hers. And so she'll begin planning that, but that plan won't get very far as you'll eventually see. And so I have explained what happens if you hand in the cloak and you're a male character, because that is a situation that will definitely catch you off guard the first time through the game. Mm -hmm. Let's now go and go to the temple. Now the temple yeah, is know. over here. We haven't been to this area yet, and we've barely done anything here either. We need some form of item to get into this building. And here is a commoner, not a character of any importance. There will be a character eventually that will appear that um, will be important here, but not right now. Let's go in. You must gather your party before venturing forth. And there is a handmaiden of Loth. Remember, we need to be respectful to them, always. There is a ritual guard, a ritual guard. There is Fair, and there is Matron Mother Argilus. Now remember, ah, it is you again. Speak to Fair first. Fortunately, she instigates the conversation. Ah, here you are, Matron. This is the female that I spoke to you of, Veldren. I can see her well enough, fool girl. You think I am blind? Eh, I see nothing special about her. What fascinates you so? Matron, she is an excellent fighter, and she is the one that rid House Disparner of its other problem. This is that one? Illithids, eye tyrants, gnomes, and the mighty solar fiend. Are you sure? To me, she looks scrawny, and there is something odd. Uh-oh. Argilus may be suspecting. I am positive, matron, that she could prove of great use to you. Eh, perhaps. Let her prove it, then, if she is to become so favoured in the eyes of Despana. You, girl. You there. The Veldrin, is it? Pay attention. The eye tyrant you killed coming from their so-called city. It was not the right type. 
I told the girl here which type I required, and that was not the one. But, Matron, I... Silence, girl! I'll not swallow your lies. Speak again, and I'll send you into the pits of Loth. Would you like to deal with the Drider again so soon, girl? Now, Veldrin, you have proven yourself as competent. This is good. House Despana needs competence. A rare commodity when one is surrounded by fools. House Despana is about to embark on the path to greatness, Veldrin. You can tie yourself tightly to us. Mother Loth approves of the successful. But I require something rather rare to begin this path. You might acquire it for me. So I shall give you the task and see if you can earn Despana's favor. I need the blood of one of the neighbor races, Veldrin. The noble races only, and blood from one of their most powerful members. A dangerous task. Your first option is to acquire the blood of an Elder Orb, most powerful of the Eye Tyrants. It's blood or it's eye. I bade the Fool Girl do this, but she failed. The Spelljammer Tyrant was supposed to be an Elder Matron. I swear that is what the spies have reported. They must have exaggerated. Silence! You should have checked on it yourself, girl! Do you rely solely on this female to be your strength and your wits? No, Matron, I do not. Enough. Should you go after the Elder Orb, you will no doubt find one in their tunnels in the southeastern portion of the main caverns. We've already done this. Your other options are to gather the blood from the Elder Brain of the Illithids or from a Prince of the Kuatoa. Either would be as difficult as the Elder Orb. The Elder Brain is guarded in the Illithid City, through the southeast caverns. An old ruin of the Kuatoa lies in the western caverns, ruled by a mad prince. Go then, Veldrin. Bring me the blood of one of these creatures. House Despana awaits your return. But do not tarry. This is my command. Let's not say no. We've got this far. It would be foolish to throw it all away now. Very well. I will do my best. Of course you will. Go now and begin your task. Let's speak to Fair. Ah, uh, it is you again. Do not stand about here if you do not have the blood, fool. Go! Quickly! We have much that is to be done while you are gone. I'm waiting. Is that something that has to do with those eggs that I'm trying to recover? I think it might be. You did let slip a little of too course. much before. Now let us, uh, leave here, because there's nothing more we can do here. What we need to do the now... The path to supremacy for a male lies either in the bedchamber or the books of the majors. What we need to do now is to speak to Visage. Hold, friends, I have heard of your prowess of late. Perhaps you will have interest in a business proposal of mine. What is it that you want? I am Visage, a merchant of some note within this city. Although you will not have heard of me, no doubt, since you are newcomers. No matter. I notice you are well equipped with magic, among other things, so I have assumed you may be interested in purchasing an item I currently have in my possession. See this golden rope I have here? Tis a relic of no small power, yours for the buying. If this is of any interest to you, of course. That depends. What does this rope do? Well now, what this gilded rope can do, and what it can be used for are separate things. A bit of explanation is necessary in order for you to understand. Go on, then. First, to add credibility to its value, you must know that the rope belonged to the famous Jarl Axel, until I stole it, that is. You do know of whom I speak, yes? I know of this drow, an infamous mercenary, leader of the Bregan Arth. A powerful rogue known throughout the Underdark. Correct. And he always has much magic in his possession. And this rope was once his. Sad for him that he didn't have it during his stay in Usnatha, to be sure. Now I'm curious as to how Faconia was able to hear this. Maybe this conversation is going on through telepathy. Who can say? Sad? Why is that? As the story went, Jarlax came on a mission for House Jalat, helping in a war against House Gillish. Twas done in an orgy of blood to please even Loth. In the sacrifices that followed, though, the matron of Jalat refused to pay Jarlax, saying that the service rendered to the Spider Queen should be payment enough. 
According to Mateos, Jarlax simply bowed and left, even as the gathered house mocked him and spread the story of his foolishness. What does this have to do with the rope? Jarlax enacted a plan of revenge. He planned on acquiring the wardstone that would allow him entrance to House Jailat so he could return their favor. But the wardstone was held by the ancient founder of Usnatha, Dirix, a powerful lich residing in the Mage Tower. The rope was to protect Jarlax from Dirix's magic. I, uh, swapped the real rope with a fake, however. Jarlax's men were imprisoned by the lich, and the rogue was laughed out of the city for the failure. This is the real rope, however. With it, you would be immune to Dirix's power, and could loot the Mage Tower as you pleased. Consider the possibilities. How do I know you aren't just trying to sell me some other fake rope? I assure you it is real. The Dweemer is obvious. See how it glows? And to be honest, if the rogue ever attempts to regain it, I'd rather not have it on me. So you think Jarlax might come looking for it? One can never be sure. If he does, you seem more capable of dealing with him than I. Use it quickly and dispose of it. And he may never know. Interesting. How much are you asking for it? Not much at all. A mere 1,000 gold and it's yours, my lady. That is a pretty fair price. We could threaten for it, though. And I'm not sure if threatening him will work. A thousand gold is easily worth it. That's a fair price. Here you go. Excellent. That is a relief. You should be able to enter the Mage Tower and be safe. Though I wouldn't attack Direx if you can avoid it. Good luck, friend. And off he goes. Let's have a look at that rope. Who's holding on to it? You're holding on to the rope. A length of smooth golden rope braided into a miniature pair of shackles. Visage said that the rope would protect you from the effect of the Lich Direx's magic. Mm. What the rope lets you do is oh, enter into Direx's tower. And that is important because... Oh, glory for the Dark Mother! You there, worthless female! Loth demands a service of you! We have just crushed a sect of blasphemers, Gornador worshippers, but they have fled and now hold themselves against our vengeance. You will proceed to the southeastern corner of the city and eradicate them. We will allow no such heathen gods in the sight of Loth's children. This is a powerful person. If we're to play along with the whole charade of being a drow, we should not argue. Yes, mistress, immediately. You will speak when asked to speak. Now go, and perform the will of Loth, she demands. Well, looks like we're turning round, because we need to go into here and deal with those drow. Maybe we'll get an opportunity to uh, avoid combat, but I get the feeling this is one of those situations where there'll be a fight. I think haste is probably a good thing to cast. Do yes. we have haste on hand? We do! Good. And while I'm thinking about it, we could also do with a protection from evil 10 feet. Just in case. Be quick with it. And why don't we have another Corgan? That Corgan does not need a uh, protection from evil. Haste might have been good, but I forgot about that. Ah, well, what can you do? I want you to also do that. There we go. This should be sufficient. I think it's probably overkill. Let's go in. Look at all that they have. There is a, a priest leader. There is another priest and Relinar. Right. You focus on Relinar. You focus on that priest. Yes, it is. I want you to start uh, slinging some bullets here. I want you to start attacking this one. No, no, no. Attack this one. And I want you to rush forward and help with dealing with Renlar. As for you, I want you to start firing off a chain lightning right here. Note there are also two Otagues. And there's also even more jellies. Let's have at thee. I want you to uh, start... Uh, there we go. Oh, you've turned invisible. That's not necessarily good. You just start attacking uh, that foe while I turn you invisible and we wait. 
The Otaku is gone. Good. That uh, Priest is in some trouble. That uh, Priest is also in some trouble. And the... Uh, oh, that was a haste there for the uh, Mustard Jellies. That's not so good. Now that's uh, you gone. We still have uh, this priest left. I want you to start focusing your fire there. Oh, -ho! you have chosen to make yourself visible, have you? Well, we can deal with your stuff. We have breach. Breach is pretty good. Let's uh, see if that works. Oh, we actually can't target you because you are invisible. I can hit you with that, though. That'll make you visible. That will certainly help. Okay. You, uh, attack there. There is a slave here that, uh, has gone hostile for some reason. Maybe the, uh, slave was with these people trying to escape. By the way, that wizard... Wizard's gone now. The wizard was, uh, only alive because of those, uh, protective magics. You know what? I'm going to leave you be. You can just stay there. No real reason to attack you. Look at how fast we are when we move. Now, let's just go over here. You are in some bother, aren't you? You have, uh... You are diseased. Okay, do we have a way to deal with disease? That is slow poison. That is lesser restoration. Do we actually have a uh, Cure Disease spell right now? No! We actually haven't prepared Cure Disease. You know what? That actually might be more useful than, uh, than Remove Paralysis. Victory shall be ours. But I think you know Restoration this. should do the trick. No. It won't. It will not. Do we have a potion that can cure disease? We might. Antidote cures poison, stone form, and vulnerability, health. There we go. I knew we had something that would help us out here. To backpack. Take this. You'll be fine. Yes. There we go. Hmm. Now, is the person that tasked us to do this still there waiting for us? I think, yep, there they are. I'm Let's say we did it. No, be praised. All victory is her doing. You have performed the will of Loth and are worthy of another day of life. You are blessed in your continued existence. It was an honor to serve. Thank you. Do not presume to speak to me. Loth calls upon you regardless of your honor. Go. You are of no more use for now. I think asking for a reward is generally a bad idea there. So I decided not to. And so, when we come back, folks, we're going to rest up at the tavern, and then we're going to take on that lich. Because liches tend to have great rewards. Oh my, the rewards they have are really good. Tend to be very powerful magic items, lots of really good spells as well. We could do with all of them. And so... I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. Later. Well, we are going to stop. In fact, let us stop imminently. Do not question the matron mothers. Let's just book a room. 30 gold. We can't rest when the party is scattered. Okay, everybody else, come over here. Around the glowy thing of glowiness. There we go. Now we can rest. Lies either in the bed or the books of the major. There we go. We are rested. And now we can yes. prepare to fight the Lich. Liches are always a dangerous proposition to uh, do battle with. Never underestimate a Lich. Never underestimate any high level spellcaster. In fact, never underestimate any encounter. For there's always the possibility that there's some surprise lying in wait. That group of kobolds ahead of you, well, you may think that they are uh, running away from you, but they're leading you towards a pit trap with spikes in it. And that will kill you just as dead as any of their ranged attacks or spears. And so, I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. Later.